Hello again, Benjamin McCarthy here, back with another digital painting time-lapse tutorial. This time we're going to be working on an ocean landscape with a kind of cloudy, moody sky. I'm going to be giving you all my tips and tricks on how to do it successfully on Sketchbook Pro, uh, as well as some other general art advice. Good stuff to keep in mind. All right, here we go. So, as usual, I start out with a sketch, just keeping it rough, throwing everything in there, not being too meticulous. That's the key. You just gotta rush through this stage. Get it down. And that's kind of like a, that's a good bit of generic advice there. Don't spend so much time carefully thinking out every move. Sometimes you just gotta do it. So, you can see me uh, correcting some things now. Throwing in that final outline. Somewhat final. Um, and this part, just like the anglerfish in the last video, I'm just correcting any initial mistakes, which are totally fine. You can make mistakes. Resizing things with the free transform tool. If you see that up in the top bar, uh, it's that little oval with the four pointed, ah oh, geez, I don't even know what to call it. All right, laying in the flat colors now with uh, the paintbrush tool selected on the left side, you'll see that. Flat colors, makes it look kind of cartoony. Uh, and I'm really just going as minimal as I can, but hoping that it still basically reads as a uh, rocky ocean. Now, if you see on the right, the background layer, I have that kind of peachy tan color. Uh, that's because the sky is mostly that color. So I'm just finding the most... Uh, unanimous color, I suppose, for the sky, because everything is somewhat subordinate to the sky. Uh, all the reflected light coming from the sky is going to fall into the shadows, and it's it's really going to, it's going to act like a light source. Even if there's no uh, bright sun shining down, that sky is still casting light. It's like uh, if you shine a light on a mirror, that light's gonna bounce back. Sure, clouds aren't nearly as reflective as a mirror, but they're still somewhat reflective. At this point, uh, I am throwing in some darker shading. Um, you can see I took the outline away. Don't really need it at this point. Uh, so now it, it looks a lot more painterly. And uh, I've been using the blending tool to kind of mash all of those flat colors together. And I'm moving some rocks around. And maybe they weren't placed in the perfect spot to begin with. And just as a heads up, guys, I'm, I'm using a reference picture for this. This is not coming straight out of my mind. Um, so I'm not going to take credit for it and... Uh, I think that's important to say so that it doesn't discourage anyone from doing art because, you know, for me to pull this out of my mind, it's kind of impressive. Um, but with enough practice doing uh, actual photos using reference photos, eventually you will be able to pull it out of your mind. Uh, every time I use a reference photo, I learn something new. Uh, without fail. So, for example, in this one, I, I learned a little bit more about reflections, how rocks reflect on water, and uh, right on this rock right here, kind of got to learn something I wouldn't have known. So it's always useful to use a reference photo. Um, and then you can embellish it too. So right now, at this stage, 
Uh, just about everything's mapped in, and I've got sort of a rough rendering of the landscape. You'll see I keep pulling it back, zoom in, zoom out, and it's really just the same as working on a painting and stepping back, looking at it, kind of looking at the overall image, trying to get uh, a more general view of it. It's really going to help you to kind of see what's out of balance. Softening up all the clouds now. I've got the airbrush tool selected. This is kind of an important uh, thing I've got going on here. Sort of adding some atmosphere right along the edge of these distant rocks. That's really important. Uh, there's a little bit more atmosphere down low. Um, the air is thicker for some reason. <laughs> uh, if anyone has the answer to why, please comment. Let me know. I'd love to learn. Um, what I think it is is uh, maybe more light pollution or something. or uh, I don't know. Perhaps it's just the curve of the earth or something. Anyhow, the mountains that I'm working on right now, those are going to be fuzzier, uh, just more out of focus. And like I've said previously, not everything can be the same amount of focus. You can't have that mountain be super crisp HD mountain and uh, have the same for the rocks and the grass up front. It's not going to work. Um, you know, there's always going to be a trade off, but it kind of works harmoniously that way. It kind of makes me think of those new TVs. Uh, there's, there's some new HD TV where it looks so crisp, it's almost painful to watch. I wish I knew exactly. I mean, I don't know the details of what these TVs are, but it seems like uh, TVs that show off how high def they are, uh, it's kind of to their own detriment. They're, it's like annoying looking, sort of spastic. But I digress. Um, anyhow, now that I've laid in most of the midtones, it's time to start cranking up the highlights and cranking down the shadows. Uh, so really just kind of adds a little bit more depth to the form, which is what I'm doing with that rock. Still smoothing out the sky. And something that I do to help me with a reference photo uh, you can get lost in the detail, like this rock here, for example. And so I just started to uh, try to see shapes inside of it. I started to see sort of a gorilla head. I don't know if you can see that there. But uh, that helps me stay focused. By that I mean um, I don't get lost in it. I don't start putting things in the wrong place. I know that, uh, you know, the smile or the eyes of the gorilla... Uh, are in one spot in relation to another piece of the rock and it really helps move it along quickly. I will say with this piece, I stopped and started multiple times. Uh, I'd work on it for you know 30 minutes to an hour and then I would put it down and it can be kind of hard to get your momentum going when you do that. It can be helpful too. You know, sometimes you need a break, but uh, yeah, there were a couple times when I would stop and then start up and kind of say, you know, what am I doing here? What, where was I? And it takes me a little bit. Uh, but once again, that, that first rule I said, you know, just do it, just get into it and fix your mistakes later. Uh, it's better than just sitting there and I don't know, waiting for something to happen. So now I'm trying to kind of cover up the gorilla face. You don't want to overly define one, uh, thing too much. And I felt like I did that with this gorilla head. Still, I don't know if you guys can see it. Uh, it's kind of obvious to me, but hopefully it's kind of disguised in there, in that center rock. And, uh, yeah, now I'm just kind of putting on the fine details. Little uh, water streams flowing over the rocks in the background. Fixing up those mountains. And uh, those hills way in the background, those are going to have a bluish tint to them. I guess they're kind of purple in this, but um, that is just kind of a scientific fact that 
Uh, things in the distance, they retain more of that blue, blue hue, and things in the front are more yellow. There it is. 